Have you ever asked yourself, what is time really? Is it just the ticking hands of a clock? Or is it a dimension we just can't touch yet? If time is the fourth dimension, then what are present, past, and future really? And if our 3D world is just a fragile slice of a much larger space, then what would happen if a human could actually see or feel that fourth dimension? I don't know, but maybe you'll want to hear this hypothesis. There are theories that say time is the fourth dimension of space, but have you ever thought that maybe time exists in all spatial dimensions? Because anything, from a line to a square to a cube, already has time within itself. A point can move, an object can heat up, change color. All of that transformation requires time as a measurement. So, if everything stopped changing completely, would time still have any meaning? Or have you ever thought, if change happens infinitely, does time still have meaning? The universe is never still. From exploding stars to vibrating atoms, everything is in a state of transformation, relentlessly. In this hypothesis about the fourth dimension, I'm temporarily defining time as the change of 3D forms. Because the universe is a continuous, unintentional change of 3D forms. But we feel that we change things actively. Everything humans create, every word, action, and thought gives us a sense of agency. And that's why time becomes so important to us. Lifespans, expiration dates, we tie it to our own finite human existence. And so we can't see beyond it. Just as our eyes are bound by 3D forms, because we are always observing, causing the superposition of forms to disappear, the time we define is bound by the changes of those 3D forms. Perhaps time is just a tool created by the human mind, a way to measure the visible changes of 3D forms. A person blind since birth has never seen the color or shape of anything. They don't truly know the shape of a chair. Can I say that they are not bound by the 3D forms of reality? A person blind since birth has no direct visual data to lock down a 3D form. For them, a chair always exists in a state of, could be any shape until it is perceived again through touch or sound. Even after touching it, they don't hold on to a fixed form like a sighted person. They are always open to the possibility that the chair might be different at the next contact. In other words, in the mind of a blind person, Objects exist in a state of superposition, not bound by a single 3D form. Imagine, you as a child, you now, and you in the future are not really three different people. You are still you, right at this moment, just taller, heavier, older. Those are changes in your 3D form. That's why we say time is cruel. But a blind person approaches it differently, through your voice, your gait, the energy you bring to them, they still recognize that person, regardless of how the 3D form has changed. So is it that past and future are just what we use to refer to the continuous changes of our 3D reality? I'm not talking about young and old. Those are definitions created by humans within a finite life. I'm just talking about the change. So in this hypothesis, I assume there is no independent past or future, only a continuous change of 3D forms, just like a 4D sphere constantly swapping its inside and outside. Look at this sphere. This is considered the best simulation of the fourth dimension to date. Its inside and outside are in a constant flow and exchange of 3D forms. Wait a minute. This seems to be exactly how our minds work every day. The physical world outside is packaged by our senses into data and folded inside the mind as perception. The entire world recreated right inside our heads. And in reverse, an idea, a dream born inside the mind is turned into action, changing the physical world outside. How extraordinary is that? If we can all agree that the fourth dimension, by definition, is the space that contains all possibilities of the third dimension, then the human mind is the only thing we know of that can explore, select, and manifest those 3D images into reality. Look, I form a model of a bridge in my head 
and now it's literally here in my hands. Only the mind can perceive a present 3D form, access past 3D forms, create a new 3D form in imaginary space, the future. Act to impose that new 3D form onto reality. This ability to create the future is not a simple function. It is the very expression of a higher dimension at work, a dimension where 3D configurations can be considered, manipulated, and manifested. And we call that dimension the mind. At the quantum level, the future is not predetermined. It exists as an infinite field of possibilities. Only when an interaction or observation occurs, does one possibility become real. We can create the future we desire, but the result is never 100% like our imagination. Why? Because our active actions must take place in the playground of the universe's passive laws, physics, probability, and the active actions of others. That small difference is the signature of reality. I know this hypothesis has some philosophical merit, but it requires much more scientific experimentation to be proven. What tough questions would a scientific skeptic ask? First, can we truly dismiss the physical evidence for time? The theory of relativity has been proven with incredible accuracy. The GPS in your phone only works because we constantly correct for the time difference between Earth and the satellites. This shows that time is not just a concept, but a physical entity that can be bent by gravity and speed. Second, if the mind is a fundamental dimension, why is it completely dependent on the brain? All scientific evidence shows that consciousness is a product of biochemical activity in the brain. This raises a challenging question. Where was the fourth dimension for the 13 billion years before the human brain appeared? And finally, as beautiful as the analogy of the blind person and quantum physics is, is it truly accurate? Quantum physics shows that a measurement that collapses a state of superposition doesn't necessarily require human consciousness. Any interaction with the environment, like a particle collision, can do it. The universe has been continuously collapsing its own possibilities long before anyone was here to observe. The hypothesis I've presented today, the mind is the fourth dimension, may not stand as an empirical scientific model, but it serves as a perfect philosophical metaphor for our subjective experience. It gives us a language to describe the incredible power of our own consciousness in shaping our world. And I hope you understand that, while this entire hypothesis might just be a thought experiment for entertainment, the core message I want to send you is this, that your future, your wealth, success, happiness, freedom, all your dreams, is not something predestined for you to find. They are unmanifested 3D forms, waiting to be created in the fourth dimension of your own mind, and waiting for you to bring them into reality. And all you need to do is to begin, to act, just do it. And if this journey has sparked something in you, if you feel a connection, then let's create a change together. Every like, every comment sharing your thoughts, every subscription, oh, they are so much more than just clicks. They are your way of making a mark, sending a ripple from your 4D space to mine. Because in that very moment, you have left a change on the 3D form of the future I am in the process of creating. Thank you for contemplating with me.